This is TDN's Thoroughbred People, and I am Patty Wolf. Today, I am honored to speak with Chaplain Umberto Chavez, who runs the New York Racetrack Chaplaincy, a 5013C charity that provides services to the New York backstretch community, which comprises of roughly 3,500 people whose livelihoods depend on their taking care of horses. Welcome, Chaplain Umberto. Good afternoon, Patty. Thanks for having me. It's so great to talk to you. Uh, this has been a super busy time for the chaplaincy. You are still out there every day during this coronavirus pandemic. Can you please tell us how the people on the backstretch are doing? Well, there's still like a lot of anxiety, um, but it's common when you're speaking about a global pandemic, right? Yeah. Um, but yet in the midst of uh, COVID-19, I, I get to see, I, I'm privileged to get to see men and women that love their job and are very proud of them that come in every day to take care of these beautiful horses. Um, and just, just to throw that in there, uh, last Thursday, I was uh, with somebody just explaining as we were distributing food to keep social distance. And then behind them, I kept hearing a conversation. And one of the gentlemen said, I'm so blessed to consider to be an essential worker. And I get to work and take care of my horses every day. I was just like, wow, this is amazing. That's really the spirit there, isn't it? That's really amazing. Yes, it is. Um, the food pantry uh, has been one of the most important elements of your work at this time. Can you tell us uh, how that's going and when it is operating? Give us some of the details of the food pantry. It sure has been the, the main focus for the New York chaplaincy here in, in the Northeast or in New York racing. Uh, we're open once a week on Thursday to the public and, and to the families of the backstretch and everybody else for our mass distribution. Uh, we start very early just to make sure our deliveries are going well. And we and we open uh, shop at 10 o'clock in the morning and we run it through one o'clock in the afternoon. We have a small crew that has been on point and getting deliveries and giving out uh, everything that we get and we purchase that day. Uh, last week, we had about 12, 12 to 13 pallets from various places uh, and we gave them all out. Um, yeah, and the other days, obviously, our uh, pantry has focused on uh, organizing and making sure that all our quarantine individuals get a care package with food and, and their uh, necessities. Oh, that's wonderful. And you're there every week. I know that because I see your phone pictures. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're on site. Um, and you're also providing meals to those quarantined. Can you tell us about that? Yes. Uh, at a peak, we had about 90 individuals in quarantine. Um, and that might be because they're self-quarantined or, or they were told to quarantine due to uh, the clinic uh, guidance. Uh, but our numbers have gone down since, and we hope they continue to go down. That has been uh, keeping these folks uh, healthy and, and meals provided has been a real task for us because we've never done that before. Our crew makes every effort to put a little bit, a little bit of everything in these packages, a cooked meal, a cooked breakfast, obviously some comfort food as well, some chocolates, uh, and other needed essentials like fruits and hydrating drinks. That's wonderful. Chocolate's an essential for me, for sure. Um, really <laughs> great news that those numbers are coming down. Let's, let's keep that going. That's wonderful. In addition to the work on the ground uh, that we just talked about, can you tell us about the communications that you constantly keep up via text, phone calls, social media, and email? Sure thing. Uh, we, our offices, um, whether it's Saratoga, uh, and just keeping in touch with the folks who are in the farms, and our daily calls have, have reached numbers that we've never come across. Um, we make calls daily. Um, just to make sure that those where those that are in quarantine are being taken care of. And not only that, we also uh, make various phone calls to folks who are unemployed, uh, folks that need to change their appointments for any particular reason, whether it's Social Security or court date. Um, we try to maintain connected with those individuals. Yes, we do uh, uh, express the message that that Naira and our elected officials have have uh, communicated to us through various uh, ways, uh, social media being one, 
uh, via mass text or a uh, voice message to their phones. We also have a team that focuses, obviously, to check up on those as well who are um, have COVID and just for us to make sure that their families are well. Oh, it's really terrific work. Um, and it leads me into the, the next thought that I had, which was, um, in normal times, you help facilitate contact with government agencies and racing organizations, and you yourself provide translation services. I imagine uh, there's more of a need of all of that right now. It, there is. Um, various questions come our way now via phone, via text, <laughs> via social media. Uh, people from other countries saying, hey, I'm going to Belmont. What am I? What do I need to do? Um, or such a question as we just dealt with today in the morning, where's my green card? Um, so many of those questions are coming our way, and we're trying to facilitate some answers uh, or get, get them the real answer that they're looking for um, during these times. Um, we, we also do a lot of translation. Um, and that comes uh, in various ways, whether it's through email now, before they would come in and show us documents. But a lot of it has gone through, take a picture, we'll, we'll translate it for you and we'll send it to you. Uh, but we're here to just to lend a hand to everybody else. That's really great work at a time now where, you know, people are inside and can't go stand on lines and um, all the other things they need to do to get that done. As chaplain, you provide comfort to those who need emotional support in normal times, a pandemic must multiply this need. How are people doing? They're, they're doing well. Um, like I mentioned before, I think the anxiety uh, levels are high. Um, and, and not knowing uh, what, what's going to happen next, obviously, it's always a question uh, in the midst of a global pandemic. So this affects... Uh, Everybody, um, not only here in New York, even the countries that most of our folks are from, um, and they're they're seeing uh, or they're speaking back and forth on how are you taking care of yourself. And obviously, um, media uh, has has really put New York as as the epicenter, right? Yeah. Uh, but other than that, other than that, other than the big picture. I think uh, just speaking from being boots on the ground, uh, we're doing well. And I think we, are, we have a good team of individuals that Naira has put together to, to develop this task force uh, through the New York Horsemen Association, through the best uh, program uh, in the backstretch um, for us to maintain and, and, and grab a hold of what's going on and to bring some type of peace in the midst of, of, of chaos. Uh, and, and that's what we're doing. And we're really focusing on that. Um, you know, my, my, my favorite color now is purple. And, and I say that to, to everybody because um, I've chosen purple to, to delete people or, or to highlight people off our list who are no longer in quarantine and are safe uh, to return back to work. Um, and we're seeing more of that purple come across our way. And I, I appreciate that. And we're blessed to be part of that. That is that is a great that is a great feeling I'm certain and and you're mentioning um, some really good partners in uh, in Best and in NITA so um, some good people coming together there. Uh, you and I uh, helped on a little campaign uh, a couple of weeks ago. We saw a good amount of love coming in from the TDN community. Uh, so you can consider right now that you're on the phone with uh, with with the TDN community because you are. Uh, what would you like to let them know? I, I'm grateful, and I don't want to cry because I'm a, sometimes a crier, but I am grateful upon all the love that um, many folks with within the readers of TDN has shown the backstretch community, specifically here in New York. Um, and, and every single time I see an individual pick up their box of food or or come out here and, and leave it leave our office, you know, with some answers. Um, some positive answers. Uh, I, I look back and I say, man, we do this because of them. And due to the partners that we've picked up during the, the many years here serving the, the backstretch, TDN is obviously their readers are a huge partner during this time of epidemic. So I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. 
and that just doesn't come from the bottom line of my heart. It comes from the backstretch heart to you guys uh, on what you're doing. Oh, it's really nice. Uh, what do you say is your biggest concern right now while we're still in the middle of the crisis? My, my, my biggest, it's, it's really not a concern. It's, it's more of uh, getting the message out, right? And it's maintaining the, the, the health that, that we've established in, in the backstretch. So uh, my main concern, and I guess our main focus, uh, at least I could say that from the New York Register Chaplaincy's uh, uh, point of view, is to make sure that folks have masks, make sure that they're wearing gloves, make sure that social distance continues. Because we do, I know that New York Racing wants to open up, and I think that's just going to help uh, racing overall, at least here in the Northeast and New York, uh, get us back on track so that we can see these beautiful horses run again and, and be able to uh, see their full potential as well as those that work behind the scenes. That's wonderful. And, and how may people continue to help you uh, do that? And how may they continue to help the members of the backstretch? Uh, it's a very small crew. It's, I call it the skeleton crew. Uh, it's, it's a crew just uh, made up of six individuals. And here or there, two volunteers. Um, we maintain that low number just because of, of what we're living right now. And social distancing is healthy in that, in that number. Um, listen, we have, we have an array of, uh, of volunteers that are always emailing, texting, and saying, we want to help. And I say, and, I, and my answer is, yes, I know your heart is in the right place, but not at this time due to that, what we're living. Uh, but I know that they're looking uh, and eager to get back on helping uh, the New York Racer Chaplaincy and its mission. Uh, we could still contribute um, at your website. Could you give the website for the listeners? Absolutely. You could still continue to support us and, and support what we're doing here. Um, just to give you an example, as I look out my office, there's four people making 32 bags for backstretch individuals who are in quarantine. And you can still continue to help by going to our website to RTCA. NY.org and give whatever amount that God puts in your heart to give and support what we're doing here in New York. Oh, that's wonderful. RTCANY.org. Uh, thank you, Chaplain Chavez, so much for taking the time. I know how busy you are um, it's taking the time to speak with me today and to the TDN readers. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much for having me, Patty. You're the best. Remember, that's rtcany.org. Thank you very much.